Aloha and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 11th, 2018. First I'd like to start by saying welcome to all my new subscribers and viewers. If you aren't currently subscribed, I would uh, recommend that you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can get notifications of new updates when they're posted. And with that said, let's move on into uh, getting straight to the update. There's a lot that uh, I need to talk about tonight and things that I definitely want to show you show y'all. There has been uh, some changes to the flow and the activity. Um, so let's get uh, right to it, shall we? The USGS reports for Wednesday, July 11th, 2018 at 12.45 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time that Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the Perch Channel leading northeastward from the vent. The upper channel between Fissure 8 and Pohuiki Road started overflowing about 8.30 or 9 a.m. with a few lobes advancing a short distance beyond previous flows threatening a few houses on Luana and Nohea streets. Last night and this morning, the channel was apparently blocked again just west of Kapoho Crater and a majority of channel lava began flowing south along the west edge of previous flows west of Kapoho Crater. By 10 a.m., the channelized Aa flow had advanced within 2,000 feet of the coast at Ahalanui Beach Park. The ocean entry continues to be active with more centralized building of a broad point into the ocean. Fissure 22 continues to exhibit weak spattering. No other fissures are currently active. Over on Highway 130, uh, USGS reports that there has still been no changes in temperature, crack width, or gas emissions for several days. And again, I will point out that uh, they do say for several, several days, but the actual uh, lack of any changes there has been occurring for several weeks. Um, actually, three to four weeks now, I do believe the still plates are still in place. However, the highway is currently open to all traffic going down to Kalapana. Up at the Kilauea Volcano Summit at 5.46 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time on July 11th, a collapse explosion occurred beneath Kilauea Caldera with energy equivalent to a magnitude 5.3 earthquake. The number of earthquakes dropped from 30 to 40 per hour to less than 10 per hour. We expect the earthquakes to increase over the next day until the next collapse, and collapse explosion uh, event tomorrow. Inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halima'uma'u continues in response to the ongoing subsidence at the summit. Sulfur dioxide emissions from the volcano summit are very low. This gas and minor amounts of ash re, uh, resuspended by the wind are being transported downwind. Small bursts of ash and gas may coincide with the summit collapse explosion events. The summit region is occasionally impacted by sulfur dioxide from the lower east rift zone. And finally, the EPA Air Monitoring Sensor Report, the sensor within Leilani Estates, uh, currently reads at 9.42 p.m., zero parts per million for sulfur dioxide and zero parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. The sensor up at the Pahoa High School uh, is currently uh, offline. However, the last reading was at 8.40 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, and it was reading a 0.002 parts per million for sulfur dioxide. The community center currently reads at 9.42 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, 0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Moving over to Nanavali Estates, the sensor located there at 9.47 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time was reading zero parts per million for sulfur dioxide and zero parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And our final sensor uh, reading, checking the Kalapana Sea View sensor uh, at 9.40 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, H2S readings were zero parts per million and SO2 readings were zero parts per million. And that is today's activity update. And now for what I believe most of y'all have probably been waiting for. It's time to play. Look at that there. What I'd like you to take a look at that there at first is this, this image here. Um, if you see there, of course, in the middle of the screen along the, the horizon line, uh, you see the, the, the green and then the blue in the background. That's actually the, the ocean. So let's start on the right hand side uh, on that middle line and you see that first plume of steam uh, or, or smoke coming up going into clouds. That is actually the the, uh, 
the fume plume from fissure 8. And if you then follow the steam uh, to the left going uh, down the flow channel, because that's what it is, that's actually showing the, 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 the uh, basically the outline of, of the flow channel, you get to this other little spot where it looks like the clouds are almost reaching down and touching the ground. Well, they sort of kind of are. Um, I'll, I'll show you a video here in just a second when I, I get done explaining what you're seeing here. So basically, uh, what we're seeing is this, they're on that second little place where it looks like it's touching the ground. Uh, it's the steam from all the rain that we've had due to the uh, microclimate that the fissure and channel activity has been creating with the uh, ocean entry. Um, it, so basically we, we get rain, then we get steam, and then the steam goes up and makes more clouds, and then it rains again. And uh, where the rain falls is all dependent upon which way the, the winds are blowing and pushing, pushing the, the clouds uh, in that direction. And that's where it gets the rain. So moving on, you see the same thing happening again, uh, moving to the left, that, that third little area where it, it's not quite as, uh, as pronounced as the, the second one. But again, that is the, the steam off of the flow banks uh, from all the rain rising up and in, in making clouds. Now, if you look just to the left of that, back by the blue horizon, well, that plume that you see back there is actually in the background, and it is the ocean entry plume. Um, so as you can see, it is also adding into uh, this cloud system uh, that, that flows over uh, this uh, you know, lava activity, which is kind of wild when you, you think about it. Um, the, the ocean plume generates all the, the, the initial moisture. It's, it's the trigger. It, it's what gets this, apparently gets this process started. Uh, it goes up, it condenses into rain, and then the rain falls uh, over the hot lava, you know, and, and you know, the uh, hot lava flows, uh, turns to steam, goes back up, mixes with more of the, the plume from the ocean, you know, all the, the steam there, and then falls right back down on it. So we're almost getting a feedback loop in the weather system here um, I'm no meteorologist but uh, I mean it seems quite obvious that that's what's happening you know the steam goes up it gets cool it falls back down you know the steam goes up it cools off it falls back down and this is all being generated by the, the fissure activity and the uh, the lava channel flow all the way out to the ocean because uh, I, I do remember that this did not really start occurring until um, we got the ocean entry. Alright, now for that video that I promised you a few minutes ago that I said would be coming up in just a, a second. Um, as you look here, we come up to the left, we see the, the, the plume from fissure 8, and we come over there and boom, that's that second little spot I showed you in this picture. Pretty cool. Uh, I've never seen anything like it myself. Alright, this next video was taken near Bryson Cinders and what I want you to take a look at is not necessarily the cool lava oozing out of that little hole and dripping but what I want you to take a look at that there is is up in the top left hand corner you see this little slit and that's red hot glowing lava look to the right in the next little brown spot you see another little red dot that's hot lava and if you look down on the left center of the screen there's another dot of red hot lava I could just watch this all day long. Amazing. Totally amazing. Now, what I want you to take a look at that there is the person standing there in the yellow and what looks like an orange cap, um, I believe would be the person that, that uh, videoed the lava that we were just watching and is a USGS uh, individual. Um, I have one little question look at that there he doesn't have a respirator mask on don't even see one around his neck maybe shame 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 you know that's not very safe and now for our last look at that there piece we have the new Kapoho shoreline and look at that there black sand beaches people um beautiful nice big one there and then a little small one here and then coming up uh, another little small one Oh, come on turn the camera back we don't want to look at that show us the beaches really okay so anyways and then the very last one right there 
beautiful. Okay, and finally, for everyone that has actually stuck around and has watched the, the whole video up until this point, there's a special little treat for you. Uh, caught this outside today. This is the Hawaiian Hawk, and uh, I'm not absolutely positive, but from the looks of it, uh, it looks like it's a, a young or, or, or an older juvenile. Um, it obviously it's capable of flying because it's you know perched way up in the top of this uh, dead albizia tree pretty high up there so I just thought uh, y'all would probably like to see this um, I believe I have about 10 minutes of, of actual footage I just set the camera up and let it record uh, so sorry about the uh, the wind noise there um, so but yeah it, it, just amazing uh, I've actually noticed that uh, he's been uh, perched apparently up in that tree uh, pretty much uh, on and off all week um, calling uh, so I'm not sure if he's lost his parents or if he's just uh, uh, you know fresh out of the nest and uh, you know on his own for the first time or, uh, or or exactly what he is but he seems to be coming back so maybe it's just establishing territory. I, I really don't know their behavior. I, I don't know a lot about them. Um, but uh, they, I have seen them out in this area, uh, you know, numerous times. Um, but uh, they're, they're wonderful birds. All right, everyone. I guess that does it for the update for today. Uh, thank you for, for listening and thank you for your support. Um, don't forget about my Smug Mug and, and uh, Redbubble account. Links are in the description. Also, if you haven't already, uh, remember to hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you get notifications on my new videos. Um, and uh, I will keep doing my best to bring you current and, and accurate information uh, with what's currently available to me. And, uh, and so, until next time, uh, everybody have a, a good morning, afternoon, or, or evening. This has been the Leilani Estates update for July 11th, 2018.